To my left is John Ferber, the manager of 3331 Bloor Street West in Toronto. Good morning, John. Good morning, Pat. How long have you been manager at 3331 Bloor, John? A very short time, actually. Only three months. I started in October 1987. Yes, and prior to that, what was your background? My background was, uh, was actually a sales representative with the beach office in Toronto. I worked for one year full-time with Jim Brotherhood in his office. And I had a very successful year as a salesperson. And after that successful season, they asked me, or Royal Page asked me to become a manager, and, and I accepted the challenge. Congratulations. That was a wonderful choice after a few Thank short, you. very successful months. How many agents are in your branch now, John? At this time, there's a full 24 agents right now. Good for you. Uh, John, the skill that you're in the process of developing is basically a hands-on type of training to ensure the quality of your agents. You're quite unique in your approach to this. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Well, yes, Pat. Actually, I found when I first started my, my biggest problem, I had to identify what my problem was. And that problem was simply getting to know my agents. I, mm -hmm. I wanted to get to know them, and I really wanted to know what to expect from each agent. Um, likewise, I think that they wanted to get to know me, mm -hmm. and also they wanted to know what to expect from myself. So what I developed was a program where I would actually go with them on a t on Tuesday morning. Each Tuesday, I would pick an agent, and at that time, we would we would spend the whole day together, and we would start off with a schedule. Say in the morning, we'd meet at nine o'clock in the morning. We'd get together. We would review listings first of all. Uh, I would also look at the way they file their listings, which which really indicated to me is, is how much time they spend on their yes, listings. Yes, that's important. Um, after that, we would go out to some open houses together. We would actually have a time. It was nice. We got together and spent some time not just talking about real estate, getting to know each other as well. Um, we got to see maybe four or five houses, and then we'd go back and we'd have lunch together. One o'clock, we'd come together, and this is when the agent would actually be a little bit nervous and come in and have to present their listing presentation to me. We did some role playing mm -hmm. and I would pretend I was a vendor. He was the he was the agent trying to get me to list my house. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a very cooperative vendor. I would yeah. try to throw up some good objections to him such as say um, uh, ABC Realty will will do it for five percent. Will you do it for five percent as well? Excellent. One objection. See how they handle that. I'd also do things like um, well, I guess I'll think it over. It's the classic, classic, classic example of an objection, and just see how they handle it. Just, I just want to find out how far they went. If I would say no, how far would they push it? How, what would they do to get me to say yes? That's right, and where their closing skills were. Exactly. We spent a lot of time with closing skills and, and dealing with objections. We probably spent about two hours in the afternoon dealing with that, mm -hmm. um, and it was quite interesting. We would role play that all through. Not only that, we would, I would also have a little cassette in the corner and we would play a little videotape on, on closing skills. We role play it back and forth. I found that was really the most important part of the day. After that, we would move on to, to dealing with uh, other situations. For example, um, goal setting and time management. We would talk about what that person wanted to do. What, if he hadn't set a goal, what is his goal? And how will he attain that? Mm -hmm. As well with his time management, if he's having a problem, if he's analytical, maybe he files too much, maybe he does too much work, that he really shouldn't be doing. And we discuss these things. Mm -hmm. As well, we, we move into uh, a little bit of talk, a technical talk, maybe office policies, maybe a little bit about the Royal LePage mortgage we talk about. And we get a little bit off that, off, uh, off our chest, I guess. It's, it's quite interesting to talk about and see how much he actually knows. After that, it's, it's down to the, uh, the hardcore things. We move right into uh, cold canvassing. What we do is we spend about an hour on the telephone cold canvassing. We do three things. We start off with, with just cold canvassing. We get out the uh, directory and call for approximately half an hour. We also call three or four privates to yes. see what the technique is. Excellent. I do this as well. I, I also do. He has a chance, then I do one. And he will he actually... He observes your technique. He emulates right? the way I do it, and he carries it with him, not only just on this, but also yeah. through whatever else we do through the whole day. Yeah. We also do expiries as well. So once that is finished, we feel like uh, if, if the weather is good, which it usually is, no matter what it is, what's like, we can get out and, and do a little bit of door knocking. Yeah. And for a new agent especially, it's very difficult to get out there to do that first knock. So we go out together and we make it a little bit of fun, so that's good. So that's, that's our whole thing. We spend the whole day together and, and it's quite exciting really. It sounds exciting and it sounds really quite innovative. Uh, what have you found to be any of the spin-off benefits, John? 
well, certainly the benefits for myself is uh, it's obvious I get to know the person quite a bit and, and see if he really is a, a hard worker, if, he's, if he can take it upon himself to make his own living and see if he's a problem person and maybe I can identify what, uh, what I can do to help him as well for the agent, his benefits or her benefits would certainly be that um, I really do see their enthusiasm level on a follow-up interview. I really see their enthusiasm is a little bit different in the office yes. and their attitude has improved. I see they're maybe a little bit more ambitious, maybe uh, a little bit more driven, and also sometimes more loyal to the company, which is excellent. Oh, I think that's fantastic. Getting back to our, our uh, premise of this, and which is expanding managerial skills, so basically you've taken your, your tremendous strengths as a successful sales representative and are expanding them now into your managerial role and doing that on a, on a definite one-to-one -one hands-on basis. Exactly. It sounds very, very good. Um, What's ahead for you, John? What do you feel you need at this point in terms of developing some of your other skills? I'm sure that after only three months as being a manager, I have lots to develop, but I find that my most difficult situation right now is actually thinking like a manager as opposed to thinking like a salesperson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there, is a there is a big difference, and I, I don't want to be a problem solver for, for my agents. I, I want them to, to develop in their own way and to feel good about themselves when they, when they have a problem. I can be a pillar of strength for them, yes. but I don't want to solve their problems and take all their burden away. I want to help them, but let them feel good about their own accomplishments. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. And as well, I, what I really want to work on is, is, which ties into what I mentioned before, was, was communication. Mm -hmm. I really want to work on communication with my agents so that they can feel any time they can come up and, and we can deal. Um, and, and talk together and, and they can really tell me what they're thinking and it goes hand in